Life United family, we welcome you and all of you other friends and guests that are watching us online tonight. We're so glad that you joined us. We're going to have a special time tonight talking about praise and worship. And I have an amazing team here to help me, part of our music ministry here at Life United. Starting on the other side, Miss Ashley, and she is one of our praise and worship leaders, kind of one of the head leaders, and she is a blessing. Next to her is Christina, who is also works here at the church, and she's over the band and does an amazing job. And then I have two of our amazing uh, musicians, band members, Mr. Oscar, and we're so glad that he is here, and uh, Hunter, one of our drummers, uh, and I'm Becky, and we're glad that you joined us. And hey, listen, any time tonight during this time as we're discussing praise and worship, if you need prayer, please call 318-688-4411. We have people standing by to, to pray with you and just to see God move in your life. And then also we're doing something different tonight. You can also ask questions that they will feed to us and we'll do our very best to answer them. Christina, let them know how they can ask those questions. You can type in your question on our chat room, on our website, on our live stream, or you can also send in a question via chat on our Facebook. Now, don't get into any major heavy theology, <laughs> just something maybe that's in your heart that, that you want to know about praise and worship. And we hope we can answer um, many of your questions tonight because we want you to experience God in a way that you never have before. And that's what praise and worship does. Um, before we get started, I just want to answer one of the questions and talk for just a minute uh, about praise and worship because one of our questions was, what is the difference in praise and worship? You know, a lot of people think, well, praise is a fast song and worship is a slow song. <laughs> That's not necessarily what it is, although generally they do fall in those categories. But really, praise and worship to me is more the topic of the song. Praise is a song that talks about what God does, what he has done. It's about the hand of God, the acts of God, that what God uh, will do for you, what he has done. And um, we just sing about that. But then worship seeks God's face. Think more of praise as the hand of God, but worship the face of God. We come before God and we want to have that face to face fellowship in time with him. And you know what the Lord spoke to me about is that worship, let me say it first, praise changes situations and circumstances, changes our, our heart, our soul to, just to focus on those things. But guess what worship does? Worship changes you and me. Worship changes us as we enter into the presence of God and spend that time with him. So we're going to talk about that tonight. They're both expressions. Praise and worship are both expressions. And uh, sometimes people have said, well, you know, how do you express yourself in praise and in worship? And I just want to say a, just a few points before we get started here. Someone asked a question, what is the scriptural basis for singing? There are many, many, many scriptures in the Bible that talk about singing out unto the Lord. Psalm 100 verse 2 talks about come before his presence with singing. We come in singing and rejoicing. And then in the new covenant, in Ephesians 5, 19, it says, we speak out to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord. Perceive, just coming right from your heart, that melody to him. So singing is scriptural. Singing is wonderful. I know everyone on this panel, we thank God that he gave us music to be able to express our heart and to be able to express how, we, how we're feeling and express what we feel for him. But it's, it's not always singing. In Psalm 100 verse 4, it says, come before him with thanksgiving and say to him. So you don't always have to sing to, to praise and to worship God. It's what proceeds from your heart is what is important. Somebody might say, why do you clap your hands? It's scriptural. Psalm 47 verse 1 says, I'm going to get two birds with one stone. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clapping and shouting are ways that we express ourselves primarily in praise. And um, it's just another outlet that God gives us to express our emotions. You know, we clap our hands at 
for all kinds of things in the natural. We shout. I'm a, I'm a big shouter at football games and things. Why shouldn't we clap our hands and shout about the Creator, our Father? And so it is scriptural to do that. It's scriptural to dance. Go read Psalm 150, the whole psalm. It's talking about praising and worshiping and playing instruments. But it says, praise him in the dance. Praise him in the dance. Now, not some of the dances that maybe you've seen, but, you know, we want to be a little bit holy about our dancing. Although some people are not just holy. I'll just say it. Some people are kind of hokey, you know, the. <laughs> but it's good to move our feet. It's good to move our hands and, and to praise him in the dance. We get excited and dance around about things. Why not about the Lord? And the last one, there are many more, but I just want to share this one quickly. It's kneeling. In Psalm 95, verse 6, it says, Come and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord God, our maker. You see that um, testimonies and, and stories about that all through the Bible, when in the presence of God, people just had to bow down and how to, had to kneel just in awe of him. So there's so many other things that we can do in praise and worship to express from our heart. There's just a couple of things before we start the questions I want to ask y'all. I was writing down some things today. Just uh, what are some of the benefits of praise? Think about it for just a minute. There, these are scriptural verses, things in our lives that it talks about. Ashley, tell me one of yours. What is a benefit of praise? One benefit of praise is it knocks down strongholds and helps you war so that whenever you enter into worship, like there's no hindrances and helps you to connect with God easier. That's right. It says that it will silence the enemy, yeah. still the avenger. Christina, what is another benefit of praise that you have? I know for myself, it helps me so much. It gets me out of, it adjusts my attitude. It helps me get oh, my focus yeah. on him. When yeah. I give him thanksgiving, when I may feel that there's nothing to be thankful for, it forces me to get my spirit back into alignment with him. That's not something maybe we need to, in love, ask each other, uh, do you need an attitude adjustment today? <laughs> I'm not saying you, Hunter. I'm just saying. Um, Oscar. What is praise? What are some of the benefits of praise to you? Praise lifts me up. It is, encourages me. Yeah. You know, when I'm down and out, <clears throat> it makes me like David. You, make it, you call on God and you lift your hands, you clap, you praise, you dance if necessary. And if you are discouraged and heavy hearted, it'll lift you up. That's right. Amen. Hunter. Um, I, I think about Paul and, uh, and Silas in the jail cell, and I think about praise. I think praise also affects people around you, and it, and it can, you know, they praised in the cell, and the other cells opened up, you know, and the, the whole jail was shaken. I, I, that's what I think about. I think it shakes chains off of other people around you as well, not just you. Amen. Well, listen, Christina, Oscar, and Hunter, the Bible says, because they're musicians, Christina plays the keyboard, Oscar the bass, and Hunter the drums. And Isaiah verse 30, chapter 30, excuse me, verse 36. I believe every time y'all play your instruments, it says, And every passing stroke of the staff of punishment and doom, which the Lord lays upon the enemy, they shall be done to the sound of Israel's timbrels and lyres and instruments. When the battle comes, the enemy will be attacked with you striking on those instruments. God said, I'm going to deal blows to him and I'm going to do it to the sound of music, of worshipers just striking those keys. And you know, one other thing too, why praise is so important to me. The Bible says God inhabits our praise. We want to know, is God really here? Just start praising him. He's right there. He never leaves us, but just more an awareness of him. So let's just, before we go to the questions, let's talk about what is worship? mean to you in your life? Think of some things that God has done for you or is doing for you in worship. And what can worship do in your life? Ashley? Well, worship is us coming before God and just telling him and adoring him for who he is. And it's just a moment of reverence and loving on the Lord, plain and simple. Absolutely. Christina? I know for me, worship is, it's everything. It's not just music. It's how did I respond Christ-like to others? Did I respond in love? It's a lifestyle. Worship is my life. It's how did I respond to somebody? Did I act in love? Because doing that is an act of worship unto Christ and God. 
Oscar? Worship to me is a, a heartfelt expression to the Father. You are letting him know just what he means to you, just what he has done to you. And you just want to spend time in his presence just telling him how good he is. Hunter. Um, I don't know how I can be and, and cover what else, um, but I, I think that the character of God, just, just sometimes when you worship God, you don't even realize parts of his character, but he'll show you parts of his character in, in worship and he'll speak to you in certain ways. You know, like he, you said, he inhabits our praise. Um, but I think, I think that's another thing that happens, you know, he'll come in and he'll, he'll just, whatever circumstance, situation you're in, however you're feeling, whatever is going on in your life, he will, he will come in and, and just, and sit in that situation with you. You know, one thing I thought of is worship gives us such a great opportunity to grow because we spend time in his presence face to face. He'll talk to us and he'll help us grow and we can become, you know, more mature um, in him and grow up in him. You know, the Bible talks about that, about growing up. God loves us. We're his children. But do you know what? He wants to have a relationship and fellowship with us on a deeper level. But we, if we just stay in the same place and never press into him and grow, then he can't reveal things to us if we're going to be like what Paul says, still just a, a baby Christian. You know, we can't receive more from God. And worship is just such a wonderful place where he really begins to speak to you and, and, and love you and challenge you and help you. So, so many more benefits I'm sure that we didn't even touch on. So we're going to go to these questions right now. And remember, Ashley, tell them, you can tell them if you have a question, what you can do right now. Please type it in our chat room on our Facebook live stream and on our website live stream. We have somebody paying attention right now to the questions that you input and they will get them to us. And if you need prayer, 318-688-4411. They're ready to pray with you. All righty. When you're worshiping God, Ashley, why can't you feel the Holy Spirit? Someone asked this. Why don't I feel him every time? What can I do differently? Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Sometimes I don't feel Holy Spirit too. So you're not alone <laughs> with how you're feeling. But one thing that has helped me so much is to understand how God made us. He made us with the spirit, with the soul, and with the body. And he calls us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And even when I don't feel him with my soul, with my emotions, the Holy Spirit, I know that because I'm blood bought, because he saved me, and because he's redeemed my spirit, that I can connect with him anytime, even even when I don't feel him like physically in my body that I'm connecting with God because I know his word and getting to know him for who he is and worshiping in spirit more so. Amen. Christina, can you add to that? I know for me, one thing I always remember is decisions lead and my feelings follow. And so when I make the decision of I'm going to worship, whether or not I get the tingles or whatever it may be, you know, God is there. He's still working and he's still God, even if I may not feel it because my feelings aren't what make my decision factor. I think most of the time for me and I feel for others when we uh, don't feel the Holy Spirit is because we have to remember we have a soul. Mm -hmm. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And the most wonderful, intense times of worship is when you can do what David prayed, David prayed, Lord, unite my heart to fear your name. In other words, let my heart and my soul get connected. Let my, like you said, my decision to worship. Let my uh, will to worship. Let my feelings get involved in worship, in, in holy worship. And let my emotions be expressed. But sometimes our soul is just not feeling it. And, uh, you know, even David said over in, in Psalm 42, he said, why is, why is my soul so disquieted and upset inside of me? Why are you acting like this soul? And he said, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hope in God and I'm going to wait on him because I know that he is going to deliver me. You've got to talk to your soul, talk to yourself, let your heart speak to your soul. And, um, you know, we can't be ruled, as you said, by our feelings. Worship is not a feeling. 
The only feeling is a heartfelt feeling. It's got to come from your heart. So just know you're not alone and just tell your soul, you may not feel like it, but we're going to worship God today, whether you feel like it or not, because we know that's where our strength and our hope comes from. The word of God, having that foundation, that truth in your heart to let you know that I'm going to follow the truth. I'm going to follow God's word in what he says. There's a question, um, Oscar, that kind of goes along with it, um, not necessarily feeling it. It's number 10. How do I worship when I'm not a fan of the song that's being played? <laughs> you have to remember that it's not about you. You have to put feelings aside, your likes, dislikes. It's about God. Amen. And we must just empty out our souls and come before him whether we like it or not worship you're in a place of worship and there's power in corporate worship so forget about what you like or don't like because that's just going to hinder you I like what you said earlier Ashley about that about when you weren't particularly fond of a song what you would do I find some place in that song, some lyric, a line that reminds me of God's word and helps me connect to God and that resonates with me versus the song as a whole. Oh, I don't like this genre. Where is the truth that God is revealing through this song that resonates with where I'm at right now? And I can hold on to that. Uh, you can probably tell from this panel that uh, our church is multicultural. Uh, God has blessed us. And uh, so sometimes... Obviously, we, well, we all the time try to do different kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Some people were raised up in, uh, like, Pentecostal Baptist churches, uh, the, you know, the, the gospel-type churches, and they like that. Some people like that country flair, and other, people's, <laughs> other people want to be straight up, you know, elevation or these kind of songs. And so if you come to Life United, you'll hear all types of music because we want it to be expressed in all types of genre. But that doesn't mean if they're playing and, and we're not really fond of the country, that's like Ashley says, find something in that song. Because let me tell you something. Here at Life United, we don't just pick a song about, ooh, that's a cool melody or ooh, that. We always, whenever we decide we're going to do a song, and especially Ashley and Christina know that. We sit down, we go through the words, we make sure it's scriptural, that it's not out of line with what God's word says, not being judgmental, but we want to sing the truth. We want to live the truth. And so, um, you know, sometimes it's, ju it's just a difference usually in the melody that people are saying, well, I don't really like the way, you know, that melody is. But like Ashley said, find the truth in that song. Find the word, uh, what the word of God says in that song. Um, Honor, do you have anything that you do that if you don't really like a certain song, you're a drummer. I'm sure, sure there's some so kind of songs when we're playing certain drum beats, you're like, hmm, you know. Yes, ma'am. Uh, some songs definitely have have the fatter drum beat, and some don't. Uh, but uh, when I when I personally, if I'm worshiping and I don't I don't necessarily per se feel a song, I will always take note and tell myself, "Hey, just go ahead and praise the Lord right now. Just sing a song to yourself, or, or just lift up, just praise in your heart right now. Just lift your hands, because I don't want to be a hindrance um, to what the." the worship team is doing to what's happening in the room. I don't want to be a hindrance to God's presence. I want to go ahead and just say, God, whatever you want here, whatever, you, however you want to move, God, come in this place. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's songs you can't, you don't know the words. So that's what typically what I do. Yeah. If I don't know the words or if I don't feel the song, that's what I'll do. What do you do, Oscar? You power, power through. through. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Oscar. You're a man of few words, but you get the message through. I just power through. And you know what? There's been some songs too. Ashley, we can and Christina, we can. You know, we work together on as a team here at Life United, and uh, Pastor John or Pastor Sam or somebody will give us a song. And we're like, eh. but a lot of times you listen to it more and more and more, Ashley. Uh -huh. And you say, you know what? I kind of like that song, you know? So you have to look for the heart in the song. And you'll say, you know, I may not be country, but I, I'm, I'm liking this song and what it's, what it's saying. <laughs> okay, we just got a question. Does God want to be worshipped? I think everybody would say, yes. 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 If so, why? Why, Christina? 
we're created to worship him. It's, it's literally, it's who we are and we're made from God. We're created by him. And so it's a part of us. It's literally in our DNA to worship him. It's the piece that's missing. And so for me, I always think of, this is what I'm created to do. Even if I don't feel like it, this is what I'm created to do. And that's why. Sure, Ashley, go ahead. Well, I'm going to tag on to what Christina said as far as um, worship being ingrained in our DNA. I think of it like this. The more you get to know the creator, the more you get to know yourself and what you're called to do. So it's like, why wouldn't I want to know the person who sees all, who knows all, who's not limited to space or time? I want to be linked to uh, a person like that. You know, I want to be linked to God, you know. So, yes, that's what I think of. I want to be linked to the creator who knows who I am so I can be a better person and serve others. Well, um, I'm going to Oscar, I want you and. Hunter to enlarge on this, but the question nine that we had said, besides giving praise and honor to God with our worship, how does worshiping God benefit us as well? So, uh, we, yes, we should worship, worship God and, uh, God gets benefits. And how does it benefit us, Oscar? It benefits us by encouraging our souls. We can come to God so heavy sometimes and be just down and out but when we worship, there is a, an anointing that tends to just pull us out of ourselves and encourages and lifts us up. And we feel like we can just move a mountain if we have to. Yeah. And I would say even more so, I think of like a personal, like you could go through the, the world a lot, regular day to day, and you can get this fog about you that you, you just got. You just got so much going on. You got this, that, and the other. But really, worship brings a, the right perspective, and it aligns you with God, and it puts him in the right place where he belongs in your life and where your attention is set on him. And it just it's like a reset almost, I would say, um, to, re, to reset your heart, get everything realigned. And, it, and it's to constantly do that because, I mean, if you're like me, I, I'm a one-track person, so I can think of one thing a lot, and, so, and I always have to remind myself to go back to the one thing, you know? Yep. So That's awesome. And we already talked about how um, the benefit to us is, is we can grow. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the reason why God, the Father, created us is because he wanted a family. He wants that fellowship. And so with that fellowship and that relationship with him, um, we can realize what our heart already knows, uh, that we are, as you said, created in his image, and that we can be what he's made us to be as we draw closer to him. All right, this is somebody else sent in a question. I'll give you a minute to think about it. What is your favorite worship scripture? I'll kick it off because mine is not necessarily one scripture. It's right. within a passage, but it's uh, in, in John 4, verse 24. It says, those that worship God will worship him in spirit and truth. But I like to read the whole context of that yes. because here was a woman that was searching for an answer. And uh, she was not a covenant uh, daughter, but she was doing what she knew and had been taught in worship. And that was, you had to go to a certain mountain, a certain place, really all religious to worship. And Jesus just upended that theology that, that she had been taught and began to teach her about that true worship is knowing God. He said, you're going up here to worship and do all these things, and you don't even know the one that it is you're worshiping. And so my favorite scripture is that passage because I, I realize the most important thing for me in worship is getting to know God yes. and, and, and being in that relationship with him. And the more I worship, the more I'll know him. Amen. Do you have a favorite worship scripture? Uh, Miss Becky, I, I'm not sure that I that I really have one that's coming to mind right now. I know if I probably wasn't up here, I could probably pull one, but uh, I don't have one right now. I'm, I, I think I'm gonna have to think on it a little okay. bit longer. You think? Yes, Holy Ghost is here. He'll help you, yeah. Oscar. I tend to like to go to the 100th Psalm, and you mentioned that earlier, where we were commanded, "Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Come before His presence with singing." Yes. That is that you know. That's a command directly from God. Mm -hmm. So it just tells us, do what you're supposed to do. The book of Psalms, yes, is totally filled with wonderful worship scriptures. Christina. 
I was, you took the scripture, right? Yeah, it was, <laughs> mine was going to be, yeah, John four twenty four. but I love it too, just especially that part in spirit and in truth, because that encourages me that I can be honest with God and he's big enough to handle my honesty and he's, he's big enough that he can take care of whatever it is that my heart needs to be healed of, whatever truth I may need to tell him, he's still going to love me through it. If he's, if there's healing that needs to take place, I love that verse so much. And it just really encourages me that just stay honest with the Lord and your worship with him. That's right. Ashley. I love parts of scripture that makes, gives me the complete idea, but one part of scripture that I love so much that always encourages me about the exchange that happens whenever you're worshiping God is that when you have an, you give the oil of gladness and he gives you a garment of praise. And I'm like, Lord, even when I'm not feeling it, you're going to give me that garment of praise and I'm going to praise you like I've never praised you before. So it's parts of different scriptures that really keep me encouraged. Amen. Well, since we touched on John 4, 24, and everybody likes that so much. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Um, Oscar, what does it mean to worship him in spirit? What does that mean to you? That's what Jesus said. Real worship is knowing God and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. That means from your heart, wherever you are, and you don't, God is not put in a box. He's not in a box. So Mm -hmm. There is no tradition involved in it. It's just pure pouring yourself out before God and being real with him. Mm -hmm. That's right. What does it mean, um, Hunter, I'll let you answer this, to worship him in truth? I think in truth, um, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with what Mr. Oscar is saying. You can't fakely worship God and expect it to be fruitful and beneficial. Like, it's, it's, it's... that's not, that's not, that's manipulative is really what you're trying to do. But, um, I think, I, I think that's, that's what it means. You have to be true with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself, honest with your spirit, but also to, uh, the word of God, you know, it talks about ways to worship the Lord, to dance before the Lord, to raise your hands, to shout, to clap. I mean, there's a ton of different ways. I also, I also think, you know, with giving and there's so much more that you could, you could do that, that is worshiping the Lord. Amen. Ashley, what does that mean to you about worshiping in truth? Worshiping in truth is just me being honest with the Lord. Like, Lord, I'm feeling some type of way about this situation. What do you have to say about it? And inviting him in to replace, because I call it the fact and truth factor. So you have facts like, Lord, I'm not feeling well. I feel sick. But his truth says that I'm healed. So it's that reminding myself of this is what reality is, but God's reality is even greater than what I'm seeing on earth. Um, someone asked, how do I worship God even when I'm battling shame or not feeling well? Christina, you want to speak on that? Yeah, sure. I know for myself, if there's anything, if there's maybe it's past sin or whatever, if the enemy's trying to come at you, um, the enemy loves to throw condemnation our way sometimes. And and condemnation is that punishment that like you've been sentenced to to be punished. You're never going to get past this. But sometimes when I'm feeling that way, I might have to just stop and just, you know, give the enemy a few scriptures, pray in tongues, you know, and just remind the enemy that, hey, I'm a new creation in Christ. All things are gone. All things have been made new. And so sometimes I just got to pause and go, you know what, enemy, this is not what we're going to (laughs) do. And, you know, one very important thing, and unfortunately some churches have kind of gotten away from this, is repent. When you start to go in there to worship and you're feeling that, first thing is say, God, I'm sorry. You know, we were saying before we started this uh, telecast that there's a great song we sing here, Graves into Gardens, and one of the phrases is, you turn shame into glory. And we need to realize as his child we are, we've been made glorified in Christ. And so we just say, God, I'm sorry that I've been letting these feelings of shame be what is dominating my soul rather than your glory. And, and just repent, cut that off, and then, then press on in. Ashley, what have you done when you were just in your feelings? <laughs> in my feelings. I have to say what Christina said. I literally have to remind myself who I am in Christ and let the devil know, like, I'm not going to take on your lies and what you have to say about me because what my father says is so much greater. Have you ever battled that, Oscar? Yes, yes. And you have to just pray. Mm-hmm. You repent. 
and you just cry out to God. You move yourself out of the way. You realize you're not good enough, so stop trying to be perfect. Just give it what you got. There's an old song, and it says, God, you look uh, beyond my faults and saw my needs. So he'll just overlook that by the blood of Jesus and just, you know, just what do you need? I know being a mom and a grandmom, you know, uh, people think God would be mad. There's, it blesses my heart when my children are troubled or hurt or when they've done wrong, that, that they would come to me and even the grandkids, you know, yes, I did that, you know, because then it gives you an opportunity just to love on them, to teach them, to train them and to talk about, you know, forgiveness. And, and that's what God's going to do. He's not going to say, well, let's sit down and talk about this shame unless he's educating you on how not to let it just dominate you. He's going to talk about who you really are and, and the glory that he's done. Did you have something you wanted to add? Or um, I would just say that uh, with that, I just remind myself who, who got, I'm God's child. I'm his son, and he doesn't bring shame and condemnation and, and put it on me. Uh, you know, it, it may be something I'm feeling, but I have to always remember that he's a loving father, that he comes to, to build me up, to encourage me, and he wants me in his presence. Yeah. He wants me there. He wants to spend time with me. He wants to fellowship with me. He doesn't, he, he wants me there. And that's just, I just always try to remember that and, 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 and stay on that. Well, we have another question. Thank y'all. Thank you for sending in these questions and uh, keep on doing that. Um, where's a good place to go to find praise and worship during the week? Well, Life United. <laughs> Of course, right now, we don't always have it during the week, but praise the Lord that we can get together. Anyway, I'm rejoicing that we're finally able to come together. We, we really love to praise God on Sunday, but uh, right now, we can't, we're not coming out on Wednesday, except first Wednesday, which we have coming up next Wednesday. You want to come worship, find a good place during the week, come here at 6.30 next Wednesday. We devote the whole service to, to worship, to following the Holy Spirit, so... We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. But um, if we weren't having First Wednesday and weren't doing a, a praise and worship service, where would be a good place, Christina? You're, you and Ashley especially, y'all go through all kinds of music. Um, where would be a good place to go? I know for myself, <laughs> I know for myself it's always, there's so many great videos on YouTube and I'll go in and make a playlist of if it's peace or and there's so many artists and there's actually a lot of different places that stream live you know I know there's there's like upper room they have prayer live prayer rooms like 24 7 almost and so YouTube's a really really great resource especially if you're looking for a song on a certain topic it's a really great resource and it's free and I can even do YouTube. Some of the things that y'all do and go to, I'm thinking, how did y'all find that? Yeah. It's easy to get on YouTube and, the, and you get to, you know, see them in, in action to and really be a part of it. Ashley, you have any other resources? My favorite is Spotify. Yeah. And the reason I say Spotify is because you can go to one song, click start a radio, and it gives you a whole worship set list for you to just worship while you're cleaning, whatever you're doing. So I find a lot of new worship music through Spotify. That's right. And we can use our phones for something else besides just talking on them or doing Facebook or something. Get some of that good music, you know, on your phone. Do you have any other resources, Hunter? Um, I use Apple Music, but I mean, really, any social media platform, there's, there's stuff you can find. If you, if you just look for it, it's there. Yes. What about you, Oscar? Oh, uh, YouTube kind of works YouTube. for me. Yeah, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's good. All right. Another question. What do I do when I feel nervous about raising my hands during praise and worship? I feel like people are watching me. Well, we appreciate that. You're being honest and sincere. Anybody want to tackle that? Oscar? That's what you want people to do. You want people to see you praising God and just giving him your all. And maybe it'll rub off on them. So don't be ashamed or afraid to lift your hands in service. God said, if you're ashamed of me, before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. That's what Jesus said. Hey, and just start out. I remember uh, Pastor and I were raised up at Brother John Osteen, Joel's dad's church. 
And he used to say, well, if you're, if you're afraid and everything, he said, just start out with a half mast. Just give it a half mast because then you're acknowledging that that's, that's dying in me. And pretty soon you're going to get on up there. Or even if you just do one hand, uh, it's scripture at the beginning about the lifting of our hands. And maybe I forgot that one. But it does say that we lift up our hands as an evening sacrifice. It's like in the old covenant, they had to burn incense. And they went through all of these things they had to do just to praise and be in the presence of God. And God's given us simple things. Lift your hands, clap your hands, kneel. Uh, simple things to do. Anybody else have something to add? I know for myself, because I get the opportunity to work with our student ministry here, and sometimes that can be all they may feel like, you know, if you're a student or even if you're a young adult, you just feel like, what if, what if they see me? But I think, too, of if, if we have our eyes on God when we worship, it's not going to matter who's in the room. And it helped me a lot growing up when I would just kind of envision in my head of like, it's literally just me and the Father. There's no one else here. He's on the throne and I'm just worshiping him. And a lot of times it would wind up with just the fact of, you know, me getting up into his lap, his arms, you know, just focusing of like, it's just me and God. Even if you're in a room of a thousand people, it's still just you and him because he's a personal God. Anybody else? I'll add to that. Okay. I want to tag team with Mr. Oscar and Christina as far as you being hesitant and feeling like people are watching you. That's what you want because you may cause somebody else to be free enough to lift their hands and you never know what God can release through you surrendering to him. It's a sign of surrender and it's a sign of expectancy of God to move. So that's what we want. We want revival. We want God to move in every service and you play a part in that by you being free. And that's also a sign of freedom with you lifting your hands. So amen to that. We want more amen. of that. Let me ask you, somebody said... Uh, hey, would would you like to never not, not be sick? What would you do? Raise your hand. Would you like to know you don't ever have to worry about lack or not having your needs met? Well, listen, when you raise your hand, you're raising to the one who can do that for you. So don't be, don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. Lift your hands for him. Yeah, I want that. I want that. And God's going to bless you. Amen. All right. Let's answer a couple of these. And then we, we just got another question there. And y'all can look on the screen and be thinking about that one as well. How can I prepare my heart for worship? Ashley, what do you do as a, one of our main worship leaders to get ready for a worship service? How do you prepare your heart? My main thing, and we're learning this even as a staff, is checking the condition of your heart. Yeah. Is there anything that's going to distract me from getting into the presence of God? And what do I need to do to deal with that? Whether it's unforgiveness, I'm feeling salty towards somebody. Well, Lord, what do I need to do to make that right? So <laughs> anything that's going to hinder me from focusing on God, let me get my heart right in the right position and be obedient and do what it takes so I can experience the fullness of God. Amen. Anybody else have a comment on that? How do you prepare your heart? Hunter? I would just say, uh, just spending time with the Lord in general, just staying committed in that relationship and keeping an open heart to listen to what he's saying, mm -hmm. speaking in your life on a regular basis, you know, going to the word and, and, and constantly reading and listening to the word and spending time with him. I mean, it's, it's just another simple way to just prepare yourself. Amen. Uh, here to, if you're like we are on the, the worship team, you know, you always prepare your heart because you realize I've got a great opportunity here for God to speak through me, sing through me, uh, to reach out and minister to others. I just sent an email to our choir. Sadly, we can't have our choir right now because of social distancing, but I just encourage them obviously to get involved in other areas of service, but also to at least still be a praise and worship leader in the congregation. Let people, uh, see and know that they can be touched uh, just by watching you worship. We've had some amazing testimonies. Everybody remembers Miss Frida. She's in heaven now and how precious she was. And she was, you know, always in the choir. And um, I was telling them, you know, sometimes people think, which is not correct, that if you have a microphone in your hand, you're somebody. Uh, but it's, that's not it. Because we one time got the most awesome praise report about how a person came in and was down. And they just went right past the people in the front. And they said, I saw on Miss Frida's face such a joy and, a, and, and just that contentment upon her face that it just really brought me right into the presence of God and encouraged me. So 
you can prepare for congregational praise and worship by preparing your heart to, I want to touch God and let him use me to touch others, you know, and that'll encourage you, you know, too. Um, Christina, how would you create and how, or how do you create an atmosphere at home for praise and worship? I know for me, I want to make sure that there's nothing at my home or there's nothing going on that would make the Holy Spirit want to leave because I want him to be there. I don't want to have anything, whether it's TV or because sometimes even leaving your TV on, it can change over to crazy things. And so I don't even really barely watch TV much anymore, but just making sure that whatever is going on inside the home is, is it bringing that joy and gladness? Is it a place where the Holy Spirit can rest and can speak to me and bring life and not death? Oscar, what do you do? Well, I shut everything else out because praise and worshiping God is the only thing that I want to do at that moment. So I have to search my heart. And if there's anything that will hinder me, if there's any unforgiveness, if there's any negative thoughts, you want to clear that out. You want to read scripture and then pray and turn on some music. That always helps. Ashley, um, how important is it to have like a designated time or place for your worship time? Or well, you make time for what's important to you, um, but I don't think it's necessarily important as far as when you do it, just as long as you do it, because God so longs to commune with us and to talk with us and want us to talk with him, and he can't do that unless we make time for him and spend that quality time with him. So I know for me, I try to do that before I get out of my bed in the morning. Um, I either have a devotion that I go through, or right now I'm going through the book of Proverbs, and it just really sets me up for my day and gets me focused on what the Lord wants versus just however I'm feeling that day. Uh, I used to feel condemnation because, um, you know, people would say, well, rise up early in the morning, you know, and worship God. And I'm not a real morning person. I'm more of the, you know, the evening person, but there are scriptures too about God speaking to you, you know, in, in the night seasons as well. But I heard someone say, cause I can get up in the morning and sit, you know, sit there and read and try to worship and just fall right back to sleep. But other people say, oh, I'll get in the bed at night and I'll try to do it and I'll fall right asleep. I'm just the opposite. At night, my mind is, is awake and ready, you know, to go. So it's what Ashley said. It's just important that you do it, that you pick a time and spend time with him. Anyone else have a comment on that? All right. Our question is, what is the anointing? What is the anointing? Pastor always says he heard a, a, a man on the radio. He was an African-American man, and he said, well, I don't know what it is, but I sure know what it ain't. <laughs> you might not always can define it, but you know when it ain't there. <laughs> so, Hunter, what is anointing? And, I'm, and there's not like a definition in the dictionary that you have to quote the word because a word. I mean, what is it to you in your heart? Um, to, to me in my heart, I, I'd say... It's, got, it's God's presence. It's his life and his grace just coming in in, a, in an area, in a situation, on a person. It, that's To me, that's it, just exactly what it is. Anybody else? Another thought? When we look at the Old Testament and when it came to kings, they took the oil and drenched them in it, and it also had a fragrance. So the anointing on your life is also God's giving you that grace, but he's also setting you apart to let you know, like, hey, I've created you to do this particular thing. Go off and, you know, be successful in that because, you know, I've strengthened you and empowered you, and my anointing is a result of that. To me, the anointing is the power and the ability of God yes. to give him praise or to do whatever it is he has commanded you to do. Amen. That's a good word. <laughs> Christina? I, I'll never forget there was one time when I was trying to play this one song. It was when I was fresh out of high school. And... Um, I was really, really nervous about it. We didn't even have like the right charts and stuff for it. And I'll never forget, we got to this place in worship and I felt that anointing hit. And all of a sudden it became the space of, you know what? It doesn't matter where we go. Cause I know God's in this. And it, I was so focused on God and the anointing that was there. 
it completely took me out of the equation. And so for me, that's how I know that anointing is there. And it doesn't matter if we've got charts or not, because we're going to flow regardless. And yeah, I'm able to take myself out and just, it's all him that's involved. I just usually describe it as it's the tangible presence of God. It's almost like you can just touch it. God's always there. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And he promised he'd never leave us or forsake us. But there are those times when we just really more than ever feel that touch. Uh, I was telling the choir, I saw, or or the music people, I saw on YouTube a video of a man that uh, went to heaven. And he could hardly talk because he cried the whole time. But he was saying that when Jesus touched him and embraced him, you just... You just melted. He said, it's like what Paul said. We see through a glass darkly, but now face to face. It was like suddenly he was, he felt all that he was, that Jesus had made him to be. So we get in those times where, boy, we just, I think we just touch a little bit of heaven or heaven touches us a little more. And we long for those. And the more we worship, the more we have our heart right, the more we'll see those things. All right. I grew up worshiping with hymns. Do you believe we'll ever sing them again? Come next Wednesday night, (laughs) we have got a a hymn, and we're starting to bring that back. If you're like me, you went to the Baptist church, grew up in the Baptist church, hymn number one in the Baptist hymnal is, holy, holy, holy. We're going to be singing that (laughs) in the midst of singing other things about how wonderful and holy and pure God is. So um, I grew up worshiping with hymns as well, wonderful poetic uh, phrases, just just amazing. And so, uh, yeah, we're bringing them back. So tune in on live stream or best, better be here in person and sing them with us next Wednesday night. Well, we're getting close to our time where we've got to finish. Maybe just one or two more. How can you worship when you're in the eye of a storm? That's the best time to worship. <laughs> that is the best time to worship. Have you ever seen movies or something when, um, you know, the, the, the big boat is out on the ocean and it, they had that big mast that, I guess that's what it's called, that holds the, the sails. And you see somebody and they're just holding on, you know, and their hair is straight back and they're closed. They got their eyes closed. You just have to see that's what I'm doing. I'm holding on to Jesus. I'm holding on to the Father. And you just begin to just to praise him. Amen. What do you do when you get in a storm, Ashley? I literally have to worship because, I mean, there's nothing else. Sometimes you get into a hopeless situation or what seems hopeless. And the more you sing about how good God is and his truth, like it just encourages your soul and encourages your spirit about I have a God that's. On, lives on the inside of me, but he'll never leave me or forsake me. He's in my favor. He's fighting on my behalf. And the more you start to speak that over yourself, it just encourages you to like, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, whether, you know, the reality of it looks like it or not. Anybody else? I don't want to take my eyes off of the storm yeah. mm-hmm. and put, focus, put my focus on God yeah. Yeah. who can get me through the storm. Well, if we had more time, I could sit here for an hour. A lot of y'all know our stories of storms that, that Pastor and I and our family have been through with, with health issues, with a head-on car collision and, and things. And, and we just had to focus God. We had to praise God. When, when my girls and I were in that car collision, I didn't have time. It was head-on. And to, you know, I just yelled, Jesus! And he was there, and he walked us right through. So in the storm, you, you praise and worship, but if you can't think of all the words to that song right then, or you say, I can't even carry a tune, Jesus! And he's right there, and he'll get you through that storm. Worship is, I love this song by Natalie Grant, you know, about, about worshiping. It's my greatest weapon. Praising and worshiping God is the greatest weapon that we have. And so just, God will help you. He'll, the Bible says he'll fight your battles. He told the praises and worshipers, just walk out there and declare that I'm good and my mercy endures forever and I'll do the work. So you, we just declare the goodness and the works of God and, and press in and he'll deliver you every time. Listen, if you're out there right now tonight, and Ashley, I want you to pray over this in just a minute. Maybe you heard earlier when we said, um, I'm, I'm 
having to battle shame. I'm having to battle condemnation. And there's things that are keeping you from worshiping. We just want to pray with you right now and just agree with you that that'll be broken in your life and that you can walk into a large place. God's got prepared for you a large place and experience him in a way you never have before. Let's pray. And Father, Lord, we pray right now with every person that is in this room and every person that is watching right now, we plead the blood and we thank you, Lord, that we are covered by you, Jesus. And we declare that you have not come to condemn us, but you have come to convict us by your Holy Spirit and correct us in love. And we receive that right now. And we thank you, Lord, for the promise that we are in right standing with you because of Jesus. And we hold on to that promise. And any time the enemy may try to come and try to speak lies and speak doubt to us, Lord. We thank you that we'll raise up our banner, the banner of love that you've weighed for us, and we'll wave that and declare that you are good and declare who you are, God, because as we declare who you are, you declare who we are in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, the only person I read this or people group that could maybe have an excuse for not praising and worshiping God is an unbeliever. If you're a believer, then as we've said, you were created to worship and it brings such freedom. But if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, right before we go, we want to pray with you. It's hard to worship or give praise and respect to someone you don't even know and give that, that, that love. And that's the main thing. God loves you and he wants a personal relationship with with you. So if that's you, maybe you've went to church as a child, but you know, I don't think I've ever really been born again. Pray that prayer. Just pray that with me right now. Y'all can just repeat after me. Say, Father, Father in, Jesus name, in Jesus name, I want to know you. I, want to know you. I thank you I thank that, you. that you, sent you sent your son to forgive my sins forgive my so sins. that I can draw near to you so that near and that I can know you and, that I, can know and you. I can fellowship with you, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will be in my life. I repent right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you that you come into my heart. And you change me. And I'm recreated in Christ Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've already mentioned several times. Come next Wednesday night, right here at Life United at 6.30 for First Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. But you know, we're doing something on Monday, the first Monday that is right now very important. Every first Monday, we always have prayer. And I want to encourage you, not just our Life United folks, but you come and pray with us. We are going to see God do amazing things right in the midst of this challenging and difficult time in our nation. So come pray with us. And hey, I'm going to back up one more day. Sunday. Day. All you parents that have kids birth to fifth grade, we're reopening Kids World. Yay! You can come to service. Your kids will have an amazing time. You won't have to be chasing kids or going outside in the foyer. So this Sunday, Kids World opening. This Monday, prayer. This coming up Wednesday, first Wednesday, praise and worship. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight and and sharing this time with us. Thanks to all my panel here helping us. I pray that we've helped you concerning praise and worship. Be blessed.